I was thrilled the morning I woke up to go visit my best friend. It had been months since she moved about two hours away, so you can probably guess how much I missed her. I had packed my bag the night before. I didn't need too many clothes since I was just staying there for a long weekend. My mom drove me to the train station since I didn't have my license yet, and I got on the train buzzing with excitement. Before I continue, remember to hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as smash that notification bell. You'll be the first to know when a new story is out. When I arrived at the train station in my friend Maya's city, I was surprised to find it full of people. I found a bench to step onto and see over the crowd. I finally saw Maya doing the same thing as me. I jumped back on the ground and we pushed people out of the way before we were face to face. We were drawn to each other like magnets. I had missed Maya so much, and I even started crying. She grabbed my hand and pulled me out into the parking lot. When we were in her car, she was driving us home. I asked her why it was so crowded. There's a fair in town, said Maya with an enormous grin on her face. I thought we could go. Looks pretty cool. I looked at the flyer she gave me and imagined this wonderful fair. Maya parked her car in the dusty parking lot of the fair, and as soon as I opened my door, I felt this burst of energy. I noticed that people leaving the fair looked exhausted, maybe even depressed. I thought it was just because they had spent all their energy having fun. The fair was full of many things. It was overwhelming. We went on carousels and small roller coasters. We played loads of booth games, winning a bunch of stuffed animals for each other. We were getting tired. Every time we tried to leave, we were pulled back in for some reason. We walked until our feet were sore. Okay, final lap, and then we're leaving. I said because my feet hurt and all I wanted to do was go home and watch a movie. We walked along the edge of the fair when we saw a flicker of light we hadn't seen before going into the woods. We gave each other a puzzled look and walked towards it. There was a path going deep into the woods. Suddenly, we didn't feel tired and decided to walk down the path. Every person we saw on the way looked like a zombie. We reached the end of the path where we saw a strange looking man wearing a ratty top hat. He greeted us and told Maya to go left while I went right. We didn't know what he meant until we saw two little huts. The hut I walked into was dark, full of stuff hanging and all sorts of trinkets piled on old tables. It smelled like incense. There were two cushions on the ground, so I sat on one of them and waited for something to happen, still clutching my stuffed animals. I waited for a while and was about to get up when a woman emerged from the shadows. She was wearing a flowing dress, and she had a wilting flower in her hair. She sat across from me and looked deep into my eyes for a few minutes. I was <gasps> creeped out, but I couldn't bring myself to look away. She suddenly stood up. She opened an old-looking wooden trunk and pulled out a dusty book. It was so dusty she had to blow on it to see the title. She handed it to me. Twenty dollars, she said, which I handed her with no hesitation. Stuffing the book into my pile of stuffed animals, she nodded at me, which compelled me to walk out, where I saw Maya emerging from her tent at the same time. She looked just as freaked out as me. There was a little boy in there. He gave me this ring, she said. She had put the ring on her finger. It was a skull with black stones in the eye sockets. They looked like eyes, and they felt like eyes, too. I had to look away because I felt like it was watching me. I walked back to her car without saying another word. We drove home in silence. It wasn't awkward. We were both just thinking deeply about what just happened. It felt like it wasn't real. When we arrived home, we grabbed some food and headed up to Maya's room. We distracted ourselves for a while, ranking the food we had eaten at the fair and giving our stuffed animals names, pretending we were still 12. When I reached into my bag and touched the book, it was cold. I pulled it out and Maya's smile faded. Do you want to open it? She asked. I nodded, but I wasn't sure if I actually wanted to. The index had the titles of every chapter, but they were just numbers, which I found kind of useless. I flipped through the book and into chapter 9. I started reading, and that's when I dropped the heavy book. It's my first football game, I said to Maya, described in detail. She was confused, so she picked up the book and started reading. Her eyes grew wide, and she flipped to chapter 7. It's when we met at that birthday party, she said. We started flipping through the book and realized that every chapter was a year of my life. I was in awe, but also terrified. 
and fear sunk in when I realized the book ended at chapter 27. I snatched the book from Maya and walked across the room to read it by myself. She was confused, but when I turned around and looked at her with tears in my eyes, she understood. We read the entire chapter together. We both cried for hours as if it had already happened. The book described every event in my life, and in the end, it described my death, which was earlier than I wanted it to be. I've never done anything important. I never made an impact. Maya, I don't want to die so early. I sobbed. She tried to comfort me by saying I still had 10 years left, but that line couldn't even comfort her. We stayed up that night, talking and crying some more, eating countless tubs of ice cream. I felt hopeless and empty. We talked and talked, but nothing made either of us feel better. That's when Maya had an idea. You said you want to do something important. You want to live, she asked, to which I nodded sadly. Then live, she said, passing me a notebook and a pen. She told me to make a list of everything I wanted to do. I didn't want to do it at first, but then I got excited about it and thought I might as well since I had nothing to lose. I realized that there were things written in the book which I could technically change. What if I could change my fate? I asked Maya. How do you mean? She asked me back, to which I replied, by being completely random. 30 minutes later, I was sitting at Maya's desk with my laptop open. I was video calling my parents. You see, I knew something the book didn't, something I could change, and that would affect my life. Mom, Dad, you should get a divorce, I said as soon as their image popped up. They both turned to each other, and their faces heated up like they just drank a bucket of hot sauce. They started stuttering and trying to tell me I was crazy. They thought I was blind. I know Dad sneaks out of your room to sleep in the guest room, and I know your tennis instructor is more than just that, Mom, I explained. You two haven't been happy for ages, and you're not fooling anyone. Just get divorced. We'll all be fine, I said. I had tears streaming down my face, and so did they. My parents cared for each other like friends, but they both loved other people as more than that. All I wanted was for them to be happy. Maya and I rushed to the book when my parents and I hung up. The pages about them being married didn't change. Nothing did, which meant my life and the book weren't the same anymore. We flipped a couple of pages looking for something else to stray from. There was a section on me breaking my arm and getting sued after jumping out of a roller coaster right before it started. I was trembling at the thought of what I had to do next. Maya drove me about an hour out of the city to the nearest amusement park. She had to push and pull me towards my biggest fear. She wasn't going to go on with me. But I didn't let go of her hand, so she had to. I was strapped into the wagon-like thing, visibly trembling, and being made fun of by an eight-year-old. Maya grabbed my hand from next to me and gave it a reassuring squeeze. I only knew we had moved because my stomach lurched and the wind blew in my face. I screamed and screamed, but when I turned to Maya, I started laughing. Turns out she was more scared than me. She looked green. Her hair was so messy. She looked like a cartoon cat that had just been pulled out of the water. We went back to Maya's after the roller coaster. We went by a drive through so we had plenty of food to spend the night eating and watching movies as we had planned. Maya started flipping through the book. I think you're pretty far off from the book by now, she said. She then <laughs> laughed and showed me what happened on chapter 25. It was my wedding. It said I was marrying a man named Marcus. Maya was laughing and teasing me, but I wasn't even smiling. She stopped laughing and looked at me. She looked puzzled. I tried weighing the pros and cons of what I was about to do, but decided that I didn't care. I just had to do it. So I lunged forward and kissed her. To my surprise, she kissed me back. Right before lightly pushing me away and asking what the hell I was doing, you never noticed? I asked her. I've always had a crush on you. I don't want to marry Marcus. I want to be with you. She looked shocked. But then a small smile appeared on her face and she nodded. I think I've always had a crush on you too. She suddenly stood up and grabbed her keys from the desk. You're not leaving me at 27. I'm going to get an explanation, she said, grabbing the book and pulling me downstairs and into her car. We drove through the night and towards the fair. It was closed as we expected, but Maya swiftly jumped over the gate and asked me to follow. The fair was super creepy, but the creepiest part was the path towards the huts. We ran down the now muddy track and arrived at a clearing. The huts are gone, said Maya. I noticed there was a small envelope stuck in the mud. I rubbed as much mud off it as I could and used my phone flashlight to see what was written on it. 
It had an address, which I suggested we should try. Maya and I drove for hours. It was around five in the morning when we reached a dark forest. You sure this is it? I asked her. Yeah, that's what the GPS said, she shrugged. She grabbed my hand and pulled me down a path that illuminated with torches as we passed. The trees seemed to grow thicker. We finally reached the end of the path. There was a clearing full of huts and a huge fire pit. The people eating and talking around the fire turned to look at us. I saw the woman who gave me the book sitting on a big chair, and suddenly I was filled with rage. I strutted up to her and demanded to know where the book came from and what it meant. She looked at me briefly, but then turned back to her food. I noticed the little boy Maya described to me in the crowd. He ran up to Maya and I heard him whisper, I knew you would come. I could see. He pointed at the ring and the beady eyes on it looked even more human. Maya took it off instantly and put it in his little hand. The woman still hadn't said anything to me. I was so frustrated, I didn't think about what I was doing. I went to the other side of the fire, right across from her, and lifted the book above my head. Stop! She shouted when she saw me, but it was too late. I threw the book into the flames. The woman collapsed and the book was immediately consumed by flames. Suddenly the dark clouds above the forest cleared, and sunshine fell on the clearing. Maya was pushed towards me, and then some people guided us towards chairs. They sat us down and started giving us loads of trinkets, from handmade rings to candles. We were so confused. It must have shown on our face because a little boy approached us and began explaining. A dark spirit possessed my mother a few weeks ago, he said. It brought us bad luck and sadness. She should wake up soon, and she'll be happier here. His mom did wake up a few minutes after. She was a bit dizzy, but glad to be back. She thanked us for freeing her and explained that the book was nonsense, that nothing is set in stone. It is up to us to decide our fate, she said. She asked a few people to walk us out to our car and bring us all our gifts. Maya and I hadn't been on the road for 10 minutes when she started giggling. She parked the car at the side of the road and burst out <laughs> laughing. <laughs> what the hell was that? She laughed. <laughs> was, was that even real? I chuckled too and pointed at her trunk full of gifts. <laughs> it has to be. Otherwise, where did all that come from? Maya held my hand all the way to her house. It was a wild and unbelievable weekend. But Maya and I will always remember it as our first adventure together.